Hello! Just a little pretext to this story. This was on a recent stream of mine. Uh, if you want to join future streams, that's at twitch.tv slash anthonywritescope. But uh, anyway, I'll let you listen to the story now. Okay, yes, but the new Relic story. So this is when I was working at Yelp, and uh, Yelp was investigating replacing our internal monitoring stack with uh, new Relic. And at the time we had, you know, stack trace reporting, an error log, and a tailor. That was like our important pieces that we wanted to get out of this. Um, and we had it instrumented as a, essentially a context manager around our core application stuff. And the way New Relic works with Python Whiskey apps is it's a middleware. And so there, um, <laughs> I remember we had this, this really funny meeting where it was a bunch of men in suits and then like a handful of software devs just like chilling out in like shorts and flip flops, like not giving a fuck. And um, they're like, okay, well, we'll give you like six months to try out New Relic with all of the features enabled and like everything that you would want. Um, and we're like, okay, we'll try it out. If it if it you know proves useful, we'll sign a contract. It's pretty typical for you know large software firms to work out stuff like that. Um, but so so we set up this um, this New Relic thing, and around you know like three or four months earlier, I had built this. Um, this tech at Yelp called Pagelets based on the uh, Facebook, Facebook, you know, made a, oh yeah, they called it Big Big Pipe. We called it Pagelets. Uh, but the idea behind Big Pipe is, you know, normally the traditional way that you render a web page is from top to bottom and it's all serial and like you need to load all the data and then serialize that data into a template. That's kind of the standard way that you would render, you know, web templates. And the idea behind Pagelets or, or Big Pipe was to take your page and split it up into isolated components and farm each of those components out to other web workers and then join those all together at the end to serve a page. Uh, so instead of your page rendering time being the sum of all your components, it's now the maximum of whatever the slowest component is. Um, and we had implemented this using using uh, web workers that call into local hosts. So they, they phone themselves essentially and render um, render content there, but because they phone themselves, they they look at they they notice changes to the output, um, and this will this foreshadows a little bit to to things later. Parallel rendering, yeah, parallel rendering. Um, so it's not just parallel rendering; it's also parallel data acquisition, which is um, you know, which was important. Like when most of your request time is spent loading shit from a database. Like <laughs> you want to parallelize those as much as possible. Um, and traditionally in Python, they weren't really parallelizable. I mean, you kind of do async IO now and have some other fun thready stuff. But anyway, unrelated. We had pagelets, those existed. Um, new Relic business people were like, try our thing. We're like, fine, we'll try it. So we set it up and uh, the way the New Relic people had talked to us is they only let us uh, enable this in one environment. Otherwise, we would have to pay for it. So we could only enable it in prod or only enable it in dev. We couldn't have it in both places. So we only enabled it in prod, which if you're, you know, if you've been at a company or done infrastructure for a while, big alarm bells should start going off. Wait, we can't test this. We can't test. We can't validate this. We don't know whether it works until we just fucking ship it. Yep, yep, yep. Only only in prod. Yeah, I know. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, we, we, of course, violated that license and, you know, did do a little bit of testing and development before turning out in production, but we couldn't keep it running 24-7. That was, that was the big thing. Um, and so we turned it on in prod. We started by turning it on at 1% just to, like, make sure it didn't, you know, kill the website and it was fine. We ramped it up to 5%. It was fine, ramped it up to 50%, it was fine, ramped it up to 100%, it was fine, for about an hour. And then about an hour later, we started noticing a trickle of this very, very strange error message coming from Pagelets. And the error message said, uh, it came from this, this Python library called Crochet, which is a wrapper around Twisted. Of course, searching crochet is not useful. Um, 
It's a wraparound twisted, which implements essential, essentially futures. Uh, but we got this confusing error message from Crochet that said, connection done, success. And it was a stack trace. So like it was an error that said connection done, success. Which was one of the one of the weirdest errors I've ever seen. Um and we didn't we didn't associate the events at all because the team that turned on uh New Relic didn't really talk to us, the web frameworks team. They just kind of yellowed it and, and ended up in prod. Um so we got this weird connection done success. And the the weird thing was we're like, oh well, I guess we should look into it because this was right after we had shipped pagelets, and like we were we were super invested in like how how pagelets were doing, and so like we were constantly watching graphs, constantly watching errors for them, and like making sure that they're like they were you know rock solid, and um, we're like, oh well, I mean this this happens on this one particular page, so let's you know take that particular page and render it in dev and and see whether it reproduces there. Um, and it didn't reproduce in dev, it didn't reproduce in prod. We're like, what, what is going on here? This makes no damn sense. Um, and after about like a, a week of like, you know, all hands on the team basically trying to debug this and no one was able to reproduce it at all, like at all. Um, you know, like a, a week had gone by and then mysteriously the error went away. One day. Um, what had happened is the team that was trying out New Relic had turned it off because they had realized it caused a performance regression and some other things. So it, it had been temporarily disabled. And so for a day, we thought this thing had been magically fixed. Um, but we noticed, we, I mean, from that point, we started looking for patterns to figure out, like, well, what changed? Like, what, what made it magically fixed? Because we didn't touch any of the code between either of those two changes. Um, and we eventually figured out that it was only when New Relic was enabled that it was causing those particular stack traces, which also confirmed why we weren't able to reproduce it in development because it was disabled in development. Um, so then, then we wanted to figure out, you know, okay, well, if New Relic is on, why is it causing this particular stack trace? So we forced New Relic to 100% in development and you know, cranked up a thing that just hit the pagelet endpoints directly. So we were we were taking crochet out of the out of the picture. Well, actually, no, we we're still using crochet. We we're using crochet as just like our HP client, but we weren't doing page renders. We were just doing pagelet renders, so individual pagelets. And at about like a five percent rate, or maybe it was, or was it point five? It was it was either point five or five percent. I forget exactly. Uh, we were getting this connection connection done success error. And, um, and we're like, what the fuck? That makes no sense. Like what, like the page rendered fine. Like all of our server side logs looked fine. Um, but anything, the, the client was erring. And so we were very confused by what was happening. And we, we ended up, um, uh, putting, uh, what is it called? PCAP, uh, TCP dump. The net, we watched the network traffic directly so we could see exactly what was happening and why the client was confused, but the server was completely happy with it. Wireshark, yeah, those sorts of tools. I forget which one we used, but some tool like that. And when we looked at the response coming from the pagelets, we saw the most terrifying thing I've seen in a, in a response body. Inside one of the HTML, inside one of the uh, the HTTP headers, particularly the content length header. And normally, content length, if you you know inspect a page and refresh and look at network, you know any of these flash messages, response or headers, uh, content length. Yeah, normally you'll get a number. And that number will correspond to a number of bytes in your in your uh, response body. But instead of seeing a number there, we saw a random string that happened to be in memory at the time. Uh, I think the first one we saw was a business name just in the output, in the headers. Just a random fucking string. Um, 
And we ran more more um, requests like this. And anytime we saw a response header that didn't match up with one of our normal response headers, we recorded it. And we noticed that response headers were just spewing random ass fucking strings. <laughs> just anywhere in memory, they were just spitting strings into the into the response headers. And um, yeah, and this was caused by New Relic's little middleware, which had some uh, C code that we couldn't see. And that C code was either like fucking with the strings table or like ref content bugs or who knows what. Uh, but it was causing, you know, random strings to show in uh, response headers, which sounds a lot like Heartbleed, but <laughs> but with Python strings. Um, so we went to the team that was trying to roll out uh, New Relic and we're like, you need to shut this off now. And they're like, oh, shit, we need to never talk to these people again. <laughs> and so that was the last of uh, New Relic at, at Yelp. And um, part of the reason that I'm hesitant to use them going forward. Um, now, granted, New Relic has probably fixed, like, almost certainly fixed this bug since then. And it's been literally, you know, six or seven years since uh, since this was a problem. So it's it's not likely that that bug still exists, but it's still something that it's just like, man... That was a fuck up on like a, you know, massive level.